rock of ages. Jesus is the rock, rock of ages. Jesus is the rock, the rock of ages. Jesus is the rock. There is no rock, there is no God like
Praise God. I want to welcome you uh, this morning, regular service at the Potter's House in Santa Maria, California. And uh, we are um, uh, glad to have you with us. And hopefully, um, I'm believing God to minister to your heart and life through this video and uh, this live stream and challenge you this morning. And so we want to open in prayer. We have a number of people we need to take before the Lord uh, as we open the service. I want to pray for Danny and Glory Recobo. Um, they're working over in the San Joaquin Valley, Bakersfield area. And they have about another month left of planting before they come back. But want to believe God with them. It's crunch time for them. Amen. Vincent Recobo down in Riverside. I want to pray for him. I want to pray for uh, um, Christian uh, Sotelo. Um, he has needs God's favor concerning his daughter. We want to lift him up. Amen. That whole situation. Amen. Believing God. Families that are uh, represented part of this congregation want to believe God for your homes, for your safety. And uh, in this time, Pastor Mitchell, Pastor Greg, want to lift them up as well. That's our headship um, in Prescott. And so we want to believe God uh, for these requests. If you have a request that is uh, that I don't have here, but it's upon your heart, um, join with us. We'll join with you and pray and lift those needs up as well. So praise God. Let's let's open the service and ask God to uh, meet us here this, this morning. So praise God. Father, we're thankful for salvation and for the grace of God that rests upon each and every believer's life. God, I pray right now, any needs of healing, God, we take authority over every oppression, sickness in the name of Jesus. God, we ask your hand uh, rest upon these uh, that we brought before you, Danny and Gloria, Vincent, um, for Christian as well. God, I pray, lay your hand upon these lives and the situations surrounding them. God, we're asking you, you to anoint your word this morning. Speak into our hearts. Give us ears to hear, hearts that uh, would respond to uh, the dealing of the Holy Spirit. God, we ask all of this to be done in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, I want to welcome you. Amen. We uh, have a, just a couple of announcements. Tonight's service at 6 o'clock. And uh, um, be sure to uh, mark that down and uh, view that. Bring someone into your home or uh, just prepare your heart for that. And we'll believe God with you. Uh, we have a revival coming in May 31st with uh, Gabriel Cedillo out of Austin, Texas. It'll be uh, starting Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then going through Thursday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of June up to June 4th. And uh, we are going to do that whether we can meet at the church or whether we uh, will live stream it, but we're ready to go either way. I will have some flyers that um, I'll get into your hand that uh, probably in another week or two that uh, you can, wherever you are out and about, hand out some flyers. They will have, uh, of course, our website that they'll be able to be directed to the revival, the live stream, as well as a church address. And so if we can do that, you be praying that God will help us in that time and we can see some people saved. So. Bless God. Let's see. Um, also, um, if you're forgiving um, your tithes, offerings, um, you can use the P.O. Box, uh, which is a P.O. Box 602, uh, Santa Maria, California, 93456, or drop it off at the church. We have a mail slot or even touch base with me. But anyway, for your giving. And so we want to take the offering. Um, right now, and so God uh, takes notice of our giving, and uh, God, the Bible says God never sleeps nor slumbers, and um, He takes notice when you and I would be faithful in giving through the Bible. There is a number of times, uh, quite a number of times actually, where it speaks of alms or giving for others' benefit. And uh, sometimes it was beggars looking for alms from people. 
and God uh, notices all of that. Hallelujah. And uh, because he sees our hearts. And so um, I want to encourage you that uh, have been faithful in giving to continue to do that. It's a benefit for others that uh, we are trying to reach through this community and around the world. And i um, looking forward to uh, greater capability in doing that. But um, even now we've had uh, uh, almost weekly people we've prayed with in various situations and that have gotten saved. And so that's what our giving is for. We are supporting uh, the work of God in this time. And so I want to ask the blessing upon uh, your gift and the giver. So let's bow our heads very quickly here. Father, we thank you, God, for your hand of grace. God, that you see uh, the faithful giving of the saints of God. Lord, I pray that you will bless both gift and giver. Multiply, God. Um, equip us for all that you'd be doing in the earth. God, I pray that as we stand in the gap for the souls of men, God, we invest um, in these precious souls. God, honor this, I pray. Meet the needs of your people. Continue to undergird uh, their lives. We ask this all in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving and uh, uh, being faithful in that. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, Nehemiah chapter 6. I want to minister a sermon I just called Holding Your Ground. <clears throat> and uh, out of Nehemiah chapter 6. And also, if you want to, uh, the next book after Nehemiah is the book of Esther. And at the end of the service, I will encourage you to read that, that short book. Uh, in the Bible that will add a little bit to the sermon that I'm preaching. Amen. So, okay, verse 11 of Nehemiah chapter 6. It says, And I said, Should a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent this man at all, but that he pronounced his prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way in sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these works, and the prophetess uh, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. Then verse 15, so the wall was finished on the 25th day of Eluel, 52 days, and it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived this work was done by our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came to them, for many in Judah were pledged to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, uh, the son of Era. And the son Jehohanan had married the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Barakiah. Also, they reported his good deeds before me and reported my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. So I want to give you a little background of what is taking place um, leading up to this portion of Scripture that I just read. And... Um, under Nehemiah's leadership, there's people that he has rallied that are involved in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And in the beginning stages and throughout the whole process of the walls being rebuilt, um, there is opposition that is, that is um, against them in doing that and establishing that safe city for uh, for Judah. And so the enemy's main purpose was to generate a fear in the heart of Nehemiah and those workers, knowing that that fear uh, would destroy their faith, they would um, back off possibly, it would paralyze them in uh, the, the building of the walls of Jerusalem and, and making that a, a, um, a fortress city. Adolf Hitler 
wrote that mental confusion, contradiction of feeling, indecisiveness, and panic. And he wrote that these are our weapons. And so uh, this is a strategy um, that uh, is we see that's being used against Nehemiah and those that are building of the walls. And so from this portion of Scripture, uh, we see uh, those things being played out. There's a, um, a, um, a strategy to try to get the people of God and Nehemiah to compromise. There's slanders, there's lies, there's threats and fear. And also there is a political undercurrent that is the it's a terminology is called intrigue that are used to try to stop the people of God and their involvement in the work of God. And so Nehemiah did not listen to the enemy's lies. He and the people completed the wall. The Bible tells us they hung the gates. They set all of this in place in 52 days. And it was very surprising and uh, to the adversaries that were opposing them. Amen. And so he was going to... We are going to take time to consider this fear, this intrigue, these threats. And so uh, we pick up the conclusion that is spoken by Nehemiah after this struggle has taken place. And, and, uh, the, and uh, this is the, the, the working of, of God through Nehemiah guiding these people. And the attitude that he is trying to bring uh, to the people to continue on. And so that's why my sermon just holding your ground. First of all, I want to look at threats, fear, and political intrigue. When you're dealing with threats, fear, and political intrigue, the, the type of battle, that type of battle takes place in our minds. When God's at work transforming our lives, amen, he's rebuilding our lives, he's trying to bring a security to that. The mindset of God's word is critical in that taking place, amen, and take, finding God's word, finding root in our, in our hearts and our thinking, amen. And believers are not constructed for defensive purposes. When you're talking about threats and fear, uh, those try to set us on our heels or to cause us to uh, uh, hesitate, amen. But God's people are not constructed by the Holy Spirit for defensive purposes. The Bible tells us that the gates of hell should, uh, should be invaded, not avoided. I mean, we aren't just trying to dodge a little conflict uh, with the devil. Amen. God arms us for offensive warfare in action. Matthew 16, verses 18 uh, and 19. I will build my church in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Second Timothy 1, verses 6 and 7 says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. When we have threats or fear... And uh, uh, these uh, are uh, darts of the enemy that would assault our minds. Because when you and I are fearful and there's threats, um, what happens is, is that you and I will kick into um, what I just call a self-preservation mode. Amen. And that's a very powerful force. Part of the uh, craziness. Uh, of this virus that uh, is the fear, amen, and so that people are gripped with. It's just, it, um, it, uh, they, they, there's actions that are taken that have to do directly with self-preservation. Um, washing, people washing their hands until they are raw. That is, that is, uh, that is extreme, amen, that you're, you're so fearful um, about um, getting a virus that you would literally wash your hands, and now you have a problem with raw skin. Amen. So how many know that's that's a little that's a that's a little much. Amen. Wash your hands; it'll be fine. But I mean, that's a lot. The toilet paper grab. People um, they begin to uh, think that they're. Uh, 
this this quarantine is going to be like forever or something. And so they make that grab, food hoarding, hallelujah. I know people that were buying lots of bullets and a couple extra guns as well uh, because this was all had to do with that self-preservation that was triggered by a threat and a fear in their life, hallelujah. If you did, if your hands are raw this morning, and you did the, the toilet paper grab and the food hoarding. Maybe you bought bullets and guns. If you did that, don't feel bad because I bring this up. Amen. I'm not, I'm not making fun of anyone at all. But it shows us, I put it in there in my sermon, just to, because it shows us the power of fear and threats. And you and I immediately shift into um, a self-preservation mode. See, fear and self-preservation will cause us to do some um, incorrect things, some things that, that take us away from what God is doing. That was the enemy of Nehemiah's project. That's what they were counting on. Amen. It was an attempt to stop the work of physically, that was physically taking place, the spiritual work that God was doing, um, and, um, and to, to stop that. Hallelujah. And today it's still a common attempt by the enemy of our soul Amen. If he can get us fearful, if he can get us uh, with some threats and uh, some other um, unknown intrigue, it, you, you and I will shift into self-preservation mode. And so we're easily moved from the task at hand uh, uh, and shift our focus to other things because of fear and threats. It puts us into a self-preservation mode. That's what takes place. But in verse 11, here's Nehemiah. He says, should a, such a man as I flee. And who is there, uh, such as I, who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not uh, go in. See, it was a strategy from hell that was taking place in his mind. That's the battleground. There was not any truth whatsoever. The word that this man brought to him was a total fabrication. It was, it was totally not true. Amen. It was unlawful for Nehemiah to go into the temple's holy areas. Nehemiah, as a layman uh, in, uh, of, that, of that group of that church, amen, he would be able to go to the altar, but that's all the further in he could go. And so it wasn't legal for him to do that, but he was challenged through fear and the threat uh, and uh, told to to enter in and hide out in those holy areas. Amen? See, the strategy of fear and threats were directed at him. So he'd violate his character, his integrity. He would overstep um, because of fear and self-preservation. His actions would overstep uh, um, what was lawful for him. Amen? The impact of that, of those that are following, helping him, build the walls and helping him reestablish uh, Jerusalem to be a functioning city, uh, a good place uh, for, for the people of God. Amen. Uh, for that, it would cause them to also run for their lives. They would leave um, the work of God to save themselves as well. So this is why Nehemiah says, I, I'm not going to flee. I'm going to hold my ground. I'm uh, not going into the temple just to save my hide and knowing that that was a strategy. That's a strategy that's used for you and I as believers. Fear, threats, so that we'd be driven by our own preservation. Amen. Leaving behind what God has set before us to labor in. See, the will of God for your life and mine is not to retreat from what God has called us to do. We can develop an attitude in the work of God to play the cards we are dealt with. Hallelujah. Romans 4, verse 3 says, For what does the Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. In other words, Abraham, um, in the face of all that God was doing and working in his life, he was a plan was laid out before him. He, he does not know how it is all going to end, but these are the cards that he has dealt, and um, he makes up his mind, determines, I'm going to figure out and play these cards that I am dealt. Amen. And so this is what you and I are called to. Hallelujah. 
So now we pick it up. The, the walls have been completed. But now the nonsense continues, and there's a battle that's taking place, but it's not so obvious. Amen. The strategy is the same, but it's like a political strategy um, kind of undermining. It's just trying to stop any further work from being completed um, within the city. And so the scheme is to muddy the waters. And so the enemy of our soul will use uh, undercurrents to muddy the waters that we would stop our involvement in all that God is doing in our lives and through our lives. Now the walls have been completed, but the nonsense continues. And so there's a battle that's taking place, but it's not quite as obvious. Amen. The strategy is the same. It's a political strategy that's taking place within the walls of the city. It's trying to stop any further work that would be a complement to help those living inside the city be safe and secure, businesses to function, and all the rest. Amen. And it's a scheme to muddy the waters. Verse 15. Let me read this again. So the wall was finished. On the 25th day of Elul, in 52 days, and it happened when all our enemies heard it and all nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes. In other words, it really bummed them out. For they perceived that this work was done by our God, and it was. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and the letters Tobiah came to them. For many in Judah were pledged to him, because he was the son-in-law of uh, Shechaniah, the son of Era, and his son Jehohanan had married the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berkiah. Also, they reported his good deeds before me and reported my words to him, and Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. In other words, inside the city, some of the workers... Uh, they had made allegiances, family connections, different things uh, to those that were opposing uh, the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem. But now they're inside and there's an intrigue. There's like an under, uh, uh, undercurrent that's going on, but it's still the strategy is still the same, just to muddy the waters and stop that making that city a secure place for the people of God, the tribe of Judah. Amen. So, okay, so now you have the people of God. Now they get a lesson from the rest of the book of Nehemiah concerning this and about vigilance. As they begin to work to fix things inside the city to function, this is the strategy the devil will use against you and I. In our nation, the going forward in this virus situation, it, it resembles that strategy. Just for political nonsense, amen. And that's all, all the further I'm going with that. But that's, the, that's a strategy to stop uh, the work of God and in our own lives, amen. Many times we get saved, we begin to get established a little bit, and then there begins to be some undercurrents and things that we have to wrestle with, but it's still targeting you and I, stopping and uh, pulling back from what God is doing in our lives. So I want to bring this lesson very quickly up to date for you and I. The large picture of what Nehemiah was going to accomplish was establishing the work of God in his generation. It didn't end with just the wall and the gates being set in place, amen? But had to do with making the city function, making Jerusalem a refuge, a safe place for fruit and growth, families, um, a power that would be established in there through business, uh, families. Uh, it would be a, a place that would send out um, um, the testimony of the living God. And the success of the wall in a city being secure. Uh, and growing would be a visible testimony of the living God involved with his people. It's a strength through those people's lives. Their strength of relationship with their God would spread and begin to impact um, all those around them. See, this morning, can you see yourself in that same scenario as you involve yourself in the building of the kingdom of God? That's the message for you and I out of this in May of 2020. See, we're not just the people that are just in the church, amen, a little bit of religion, and, and we're kind of scratching that itch. We're being nice people, amen. Hopefully we function as the church is to function. 
Amen? And it has to do with bringing a testimony of Jesus Christ. It's outlined in history before you and I. Hey, man, in this, in this scenario, we're given a little history and a little insight of what's taking place. Hopefully, you know, praise God, thank God, hopefully we are nicer people after we get saved and, you know, than, nicer than we used to be. But I'm talking about something larger that God is doing in, in our lives and amongst us. Amen. The message for us is we are building the kingdom of God. So all those that would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, um, a body of believers, a congregation, the work of the gospel on a large scale, people would find a place where they can be established and grow up into the things of God and what he be, would then begin to begin to do in their lives. See, we're given a lesson about the threats, the fear, political intrigue that will be against our minds, amen, and all those as they enter into a Christian lifestyle, amen, endeavor to enter into all that God would have. There's a battle that begins to go on in our thinking, in our minds. See, God is always looking for someone to set the pace. Hallelujah. Always remember this. God is always looking for someone to set the pace. And I'm just not talking about everybody else around us, but he's looking at us uh, if we would set the pace. Nehemiah was the pace setter in rebuilding the walls and establishing Jerusalem to function so it would be a blessing to every inhabitant and those that would surround that city. Amen. This is where we find our place in the work of God, being a pace setter for, at whatever the capacity of our lives may be. Ephesians 4 verse 11 says, it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their de deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Hallelujah. See, we have to recognize that the strategies of threats, fear, political intrigue, would have us believe that we are not able to be a pace setter in the building of the work of God. Don't believe that. Amen. Just as it was a lie in the story, it's a lie that is directed at your, your mind and my mind uh, concerning the work of God going on in us and through us. Amen. God is involved with you and I in building his kingdom. So dismiss the lie and uh, roll our sleeves up and we labor and build with Jesus Christ. See, in this historical account, we see some of those inside of Jerusalem still opposing because they have listened to the lie. Something has, of unbelief has got a hold of them. They're filled with some doubt. They're kind of playing both sides of the fence in case uh, Nehemiah doesn't pull off the rebuilding and the reestablishing of Jerusalem. And so they want to keep a, a, a little connection to the outside. Amen. That's a strategy and a lie from hell. Hallelujah. That, yeah, well, this is Jesus. This is good. And God's at work. But I better keep uh, something just in case. Amen. It's a it's a it's a it's a political task. It's a dead, it's a hidden intrigue that's taking place. See, but God calls upon those of faith to set things in place by the word of truth, Jesus Christ. That's our part. Someone has to set that in place, and it falls upon you and I. First Corinthians one, <clears throat> verse twenty six. Brothers and sisters, look at what you were when God called you. Not many of you are wise in the way of the world, judges wisdom. Not many of you had great influence. Not many of you came from important families, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose what the world thinks is unimportant and what the world looks down on and thinks is nothing in order to destroy what the world thinks is important. God did this so that no one can brag in his presence because the god you are because of god you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from god in Christ we are 
put right with God and have been made holy and have been set free from sin. So as the scripture says, if someone wants to brag, he should brag only about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See, Nehemiah is given the wisdom of God. Because he is about the business of the kingdom of God, he sets himself as a pace setter. He's equipped for his task at hand. Jesus Christ, understand, will, which is good news for you and I, Jesus Christ will equip us for what he has called us into. He will equip our lives for what he's called us to. Amen. This is the book of Esther. The next book after Nehemiah. In the Old Testament, it's a great help for you and I as believers who God is working with in building his kingdom, that book of Esther. In my Bible, it's only like seven pages. And it's just right after the, the book of Nehemiah. And so I encourage you to read that. Amen. After viewing this sermon, and quick grab it and see how God speaks to you. Let God show you through that what God is able to do with a willing heart. It's a short book, amen. But a challenge comes to Esther eventually that it may be in the question is placed before her that she was set in place for such a time as this, and amen. Our lives are lived every day as an eternal now, hallelujah, for such a time as this. God has laid his hand upon your life. God will lay his hand on your life for such a time as this. See, before we were quarantined, we were able to hold services at a body, as a body of believers. You have, may have not been challenged as you are now in your Christian life to personally fill the role as a builder of the kingdom of God. It might have been where you came into a church service, the service just kind of functioned, you were a participant in it, but um, uh, now, as that has changed, there's like a challenge and a greater thing that sets upon your life and my life. Amen. Now we have, we feel the weight of being that personal builder. Amen. We fill a spot in the kingdom of God to build the kingdom of God. Amen. Outside of, of a church setting. I am convinced that every believer has been set in place for such a time as this. Amen. Your life and my life. God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. Esther 4, here's the portion of scripture. I want to just read this quickly. She's getting a word from God. Amen. If you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. In other words... There's no guarantee, but there is a guarantee if she begins to step out and set in her place, God uh, will go to work. If we wait and, and, and get on our heels and just wait to see defensively what's gonna, how things are going to shake out with the gospel and what God is doing in our lives, I want you to know that's a dicey thing. But if we're to be on the, on the offensive, then God will involve himself and you and I have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. See, the book of Ex Esther, like I said, is right after Nehemiah. And it's easy to find. I want to encourage you to take time to read that whole short story and let God speak to your, how, your heart. Amen. See, right now, we're, not, uh, um, we're, we're holding our ground. Hallelujah. We aren't backpedaling uh, from lies, threats, uh, the mind hassle, the battle um, of the enemy of our soul at all. We're looking to press the battle to the gates. Amen. It's a time for you and I as believers hold our ground, believing God, to finish what he's working in our lives, in a congregation, enlarging the kingdom of God, making a testimony that can go uh, um, to all those that are around us this morning. So praise God. Let's bow our heads very quickly. Holding your ground, encourage you, hold your place. Don't let some threats, fear, intimidation, intrigue under below the surface things that mess with our heads. Amen. Don't let them trip you up. Hallelujah. Maybe this morning, before we go any further, 
you are uh, in a place where you've heard this service, but you've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. And um, I want to offer you and give you an invitation to receive him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says if we'll believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and, and uh, believe that uh, he shed his precious blood for us as sinners, and then God raised him up from the dead on the third day, if we'll believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says it will be saved. A miracle will take place in your life, not just a little doctrine but a miracle will take place in life god will break the strongholds of sin give you peace in your mind amen anyone under the sound of my voice i'm going to say a prayer and you can repeat it after me it's just a simple prayer of inviting jesus christ into your life i encourage you to do that seize upon this opportunity as you hear this this morning. So praise God. Let's bow our heads and uh, you say this prayer with me. Say it out loud. Say, Jesus, this morning, I know that I am a sinner. I know that you died on the cross for me personally. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I confess that I'm a sinner. I repent and turn from that. And turn towards you. I ask you to forgive me right now. Come into my heart. Make me a new creature. In Jesus Christ. I thank you for this. And let the blood of Jesus cleanse me. I thank you for this. In Jesus wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father I pray right now. God upon each every life that prayed this prayer. That responded. God, that you would lay your hand right now upon their lives. Make yourself real. Lift every burden. God, flood their soul with the hope and the reality of salvation. God, lift every burden. Put into their hearts and minds hope. Hallelujah. We ask this in Jesus' name. Praise God. Secondly, I want to just challenge you love God. You, you're in the business of building the kingdom of God. God's working to... Shore up your life, make it function. I want to encourage you to hold your ground. The devil will use threats, fear, uh, 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 political intrigue that's under a little under the surface of your life. Amen. And he'll try to get us into a self-preservation mode, and uh, knowing that if he can get you and I moving in that, that realm that uh, we will probably take our hands off the work of all that God is doing in our lives presently. Amen. And so Nehemiah says, and you and I should say, should such a man as I flee? Amen. I'm not going to violate my character or intrigue or my uh, 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 integrity, rather. I'm not, I'm not making that move of self-preservation. Hold the ground, and God will help you in that. Amen. That's a strategy of the enemy for our souls. Hallelujah. Just as it was with, with Tobiah and Sanballat and a couple other lightweight opposition. Amen. The building of the walls. Praise God. So, amen. Set your heart to that and uh, make that stand before the Lord. Hold your ground. Hallelujah. Remember the service tonight, 6 o'clock. Um, be a part of that. And uh, I believe God's going to help us. Amen. Give us some fruit and enlarge our hearts in all things. So praise God. The Lord bless you. Amen. Praise God.